few of us. Few of us. So you ready to move? Yep. What are you going to do? Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 
Oh, there it is. I had to leave. It's in race discussion. Then we missed the walk the water for May 20th, 2023. Yeah, those are for public work. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mary. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, we'll be walking down 3rd Avenue. Um, we don't think we need the road closed. There will be um, maybe 50 of us. Um, and then we'll get out to Durst Road and we'll walk the pedestrian path on both sides, go up almost to 39, and then come back. Okay. We did this two years ago. And we didn't have an issue with Good work on Durst Road. So they're starting construction on Durst before that, are they? No, they're not. Okay, thank you. I just make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item F. Consideration discussion event permit beer, bacon, and cheese festival June 9th and 10th, 2023. With Temporary class beer license. This is an annual event, also. Becca, do you want to speak to that at all? Um, this is similar to all the previous years. It's actually Poker Fest, and we're making G's Poker Fest in June 9th and 10th. Features just music, dancing. Um, we have a dance instructor coming in to teach the young people how to poker. And then your bacon and cheese is from one to five on Saturday, June 10th. Um, that is a lot of people downtown, but we have capped the number. There's no increase in attendance to that, so it should be very similar to previous years. What was the attendance number? Sorry, again. 2000. Okay. <clears throat> I guess I'd make a motion to approve the and permit for the beer, bacon, and cheese, and cocoa festival. I think. Does this include the cocoa test? It doesn't say it down here. The permit is both, yeah. Okay, okay. No, I can I can make an amendment for the motion to stick to what's on the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. IMG consideration discussion speak use permit for New Glarus High School graduation grade on June 4th, 2023. This came before public work for the safety I assume. Right. This is a wonderful tradition that we've done on this in the third year. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that we um, allow the student use permit for the high school graduation. Second. A in the motion second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item eight consideration discussion. Speak use from it. American Legion Memorial Day parade, May 29th, 2023. I assume this was approved too. Mm -hmm. I would make a motion to approve the students for for the American Legion Memorial Day Parade on May 29th. Second. A motion and second. Any further discussion? Do not all in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? Motion carries. Consideration discussion for sign improvement grant grant guidelines revision. That's on page 46 of Lauren's motion. Yeah, so uh, we received a request uh, from a downtown business uh, asking if they could complete the work themselves and apply for the facade improvement grant. I took this to the community development authority and kind of posed the question to them, and we had two meetings where we discussed it and then worked through some revisions to the guidelines. So I have those proposed revisions here. Um, the highlights are that you know, the applicant can complete the work themselves. Um, most projects cannot require a building permit, so it's minor repairs only that they're eligible for. Um, the grant would cover the cost of materials and equipment rental, um, but it would not cover labor costs, so they can't pay themselves to do yeah. projects. Um, and so the applicant would be required to submit a detailed budget with cost quoted for materials and equipment rental in lieu of the normal two bid requirements. So 
Does that include like receipts for what they use? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So they would submit a budget yeah. ahead of time. We, we, uh, the CDA would approve and the bill for would approve the grant, and then they would re submit receipts for the actual cost. Okay. Yep. And it's just materials and equipment. That's, that's the only change on the uh, sheet 47 there? Yeah, and oh, on yeah. 48, I have just a minor kind of clarification. Oh, okay. You want to do some more documentation on a before and after yeah. photo and submitting with these. Mm -hmm. And then I just have a few, like, I think I have one minor uh, change to the application that just further clarifies that they need to submit um, quotes. Yeah, before and after photos is a great idea. Yeah. Because it can also show what <coughs> what the dollars is going towards and how it's improving. That's how exactly. Yeah. So great, Good document. Great addition. Yeah. So is this a, a, a This is just um, the program guidelines. It just changes, updates the program guidelines to allow us to store those. Well, the guidelines. Sense to me. Mm -hmm. So I'd make a motion to approve the changes to the uh, facade improvement grant guidelines that you outlined in detail. Okay. <clears throat> motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Nick, I'm going to do a couple more lines and then we'll go back to you if that's okay. For sure thing. Okay. Considerate success resolution 23-06 preserve fund debt policy. So 53. Yeah, so um, this is an annual resolution that we passed that just reaffirms our uh, policies for our reserve fund and our debt, um, general debt policy that, that we do every year. Um, so this just has some information on kind of what our limit is and where we're at now. Um, but again, this is kind of just an annual thing that we have. I'm going to go ahead and make the motion to the Minnesota Reserve Fund policy. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a treat. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion? Bring none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Considering to discuss resolution 22 07, amending resolution are 22 20, budget, adoption, and tax levy, which is item 4, or page 54, I'm sorry. <coughs> Lauren? This is just a cleanup. Um, so when we pass the budget, um, those two uh, TID numbers that are highlighted in the resolution had older numbers than what we currently have. And so the auditor just asked us to clean it up and, and add the updated number. So yeah, that's, that's all it is. So what does the yellow number represent? That taxes? So that's our fund balance in the TIF or TIF district from what I understand. MSA handles a lot of our um, TID reports and TID. Um, and the fund balance is what? Is it the original TID minus what has been paid off? Correct. So if you look, well, if you look at the budget line here, it's our expenses and then less our revenue. Um, so that's the increment that is left over in each TID. The TID 3 is our brewery TID, which will be closing in 2026. Um, and then the TID 4 is our downtown district TID. That's in 42. Closes in 42, is that I think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. yeah, so this doesn't impact taxes or anything. Right. This is just a cleanup kind of. It's updated it's just number of the yeah. So, how does that fit in with the 200,000 that moved, moved from kid three to kid four? Where does that show up? Because I think that's 
recommend it for a few, few more years yet, right? Until 2026. Correct. 200,000 yeah. to take in our kids to make them put in kids for. So okay. will that reduce the number of kids three by 200,000 then? And add 200,000 to what then kids for? <coughs> I, this is just reflecting what it what it looks like currently. Um, so any transfer yes, but update those numbers. Um, so say if you transferred two thousand now, you could you could subtract it from the three twenty two nine forty three and add it to the two oh six if you transferred the two hundred thousand. Correct. And Tinsery is super successful, and I'm getting one of those no, so it helped us fund projects at Kid 4. Um, we did grants during COVID for our downtown businesses, and they stuff like that. The mm -hmm. grants is funded through there, so it's, it's basically a way by following uh, the state guidelines that we can help fund those projects. A quick answer. Yep. Answer. So, how much was the initial kit for the group? Is that, a, that amount? Um, it's, so, how? How, how do you determine the initial so, amount? Yeah, so when a TIF district is established, they look at what the assessed value of the land is, and that is the kind of they set that. So any development on that land is called an increment, mm -hmm. and that's what's captured in the TIF, okay. in the increment. So when the brewery develops and they increase the assessed value of that property, that increment was then collected in the TIF district. So when it goes out in 26, all of that money will go back to all the tax agencies instead of just going into the tip. But the, the, what's collected from the tip also goes into providing, uh, paying for some of the costs of development. Right. right. Yep. How, how is that amount determined? <laughs> so that's determined by the village board and the, there's a tip district plan as well. And so over time, we can amend the plans for new projects or things like that. Um, so it, it's kind of up to the board on how you want to spend that money. Um, and we've already established some things like the thought improvement grant, that's in the downtown tip, and other kind of program projects. Mm -hmm. Believe me, Larry. <laughs> People from MFA, I wouldn't understand it either. <laughs> Very complicated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at this time, we have a. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, at this time, we have an update of the new third social development project by Mr. Nate, you're on, Nate. Am I, uh, thank you. Am I late? Was I first? Yeah. Can I, can I pass out and hand sure. out to the, um, part of me is, um, I'm passing out a little, um, pamphlet for, um, our new trustees and old trustees. Um, so my name is Nick Nate. I'm kind of part of a husband and wife duo that's going to be, um, Engaging with the village of New Blairs to, to uh, restore and redevelop the New Blairs Hotel. And uh, part of this, uh, potentially, hopefully, new, uh, restore and redevelop the New Blairs Hotel. And uh, I just wanted to um, first be able to introduce myself to the new trustees in the village and let you know that over the next uh, year and a half, as we get into redeveloping this amazing iconic property and returning it to its true um, uh, abundance and splendor of the mid 20th century that I'm really excited to be working with everybody um, and to be um, restoring this really important part of uh, the city's uh, history, um, not only in, in uh, for uh, the civic uh, character for, for uh, people who live in New Blairs, but also for the tourists that have used this building for 175 years. Um, my background's in uh, food and beverage, hospitality, and most recently we uh, redeveloped the Paola Creamery in, in, uh, in, uh, in Paola. And uh, currently our, our plans right now, we've just a little update on where we are. The building's 
uh, under contract. It'll be about six months to re uh, do our due diligence to make sure that we have all our uh, ducks in a row and our uh, T's crossed and I's dotted. Um, by hopefully this fall, the building will be under contract, design development will begin, and if everything goes well, uh, the new New Polaris Hotel, which really uh, is in many ways both new but old, will be open sometime next fall, fall of 2024. Um, our current plans right now are to have a, a, a reactivated uh, um, upscale to luxury amenity boutique hotel. Um, where the current hotel rooms are and haven't been used for about 25 years. Um, in many ways, we want to bring back the, the character and the, the life and the sounds and uh, the celebrations of, of uh, what was at one time uh, Robis Yodel Club and uh, the New Blair's Hotel Restaurant. So still thinking classic uh, Swiss cuisine, American classics. Um, as we are positioning the property to be on the National Register of Historic Places, um, really the, the Yodel Club and uh, what took place there in the 1960s and 1970s is really that building being a really critical part of the Swiss Renaissance in each town um, is gonna play a really central role. And uh, we're, we're really excited to be able to um, restore both the physical uh, location, but also um, the centrality of that. Of that uh, space for the community and for visitors. Um, our, our plans for the for the uh, for the basement right now is something a little bit different and kind of looking uh, at that uh, place when it was um, kind of the town saloon and kind of paying homage to the 19th century history of that building. As many of you guys know, it's been in operation since the 1950s and has continually welcomed guests and locals almost for 175 years. So. Um, that's where uh, we are, and um, that's kind of where we're um, hoping to be. Um, I kind of run a husband and wife development company. We also have a couple hospitality and finance and marketing and admin people who will be working with us. I'm planning to be at most uh, of these meetings uh, that have any relevancy towards um, this project as it relates particularly to the Pitt District um, and also to the needs that we're going to need to uh, work with the, the village on uh, related to public infrastructure improvement and just to make sure that as we do this we're as sensitive and thoughtful um, as we can to not only this incredible historic and cultural resource but also to all the public um, uh, infrastructure that we we may need to use although currently right now the density of the proposed development um, is probably hit I was joking with Lauren, it's probably not going to ever be the party that it was in the 1960s and 1970s there. Um, so we don't anticipate having a significant um, a change in, in the historic use of the building, but we'll be working very closely with everybody here and really excited to be able to um, uh, just turn. Uh, we're very honored and pleased to be able to uh, hopefully steward this building into um, the middle of this century and towards the end of this century and and, uh, and see if we can't get this hotel and this amazing restaurant and bar and community and civic space into its uh, third century of operation. Uh, the general contractor on this project is a general contractor that we've worked with uh, historically, Bachman Construction. Uh, have quite a few local uh, Bachman uh, employees here in, the, in Green County and, and regionally. And if you're not familiar with them, we've worked on uh, with them not only on the Light Greenery project, but uh, uh, the Garber Feed Mill project. And Bachman has done a lot of those work um, on the UW campus, restoring and uh, rehabilitating, rehabilitating uh, their building. So um, that's a little bit of my pitch to the new uh, trustees, and I'm uh, really looking forward to, to working with everyone here uh, in the next year and a half. And probably much longer, <laughs> maybe for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Uh, uh, what we plan to manage uh, part of our um, development philosophy is we really like to restore uh, these structures and we also really like to be able to manage them as well. Um, we think when you have a building that's a treasure like this and has such a meaning story, the opportunity to not just lease it out to somebody else and have them do it is a, a missed opportunity. So um, we will not only be acting as the developers, but we'll be acting uh, as the manager. At least the next 
contractually 10 years. Oh. Thank you. Your question might be a little too soon. Do you plan to separate current hotel from the adjoining building? In what the building was built, I think in four to five different. Look, just um, looking at this, it has a walkway around the whole building. <coughs> oh, our, our plan currently right now is to restore the historic facade of the 1960s and 1970s, which would be to remove that stucco. <coughs> um, that's um, as we as we look at this building as a cultural and historic resource. The way that we've been working with the state of Wisconsin and the National Park Service has um, been to um, emphasize the 1960s and 1970s Swiss Renaissance era. And so as you go through the development of this pipe, with that, um, you, you, you pick an era of critical significance. So as we restore this building and as we redevelop the building, we're really going to be focused on that kind of 1960s. Swiss Renaissance era. And when we look at materials and we look at the choices that we make with um, what stays and what uh, what uh, what goes, that particular era is really going to be, as we see it, the defining, uh, the defining period of this building. The, the National Park Service is that somebody from, the, from that period of critical significance should be able to some of you are probably there in the 60s, so if you want to come talk to me, uh, people who were there in the period of critical significance should be able to walk in this building and be able to um, recognize uh, <coughs> it. So, yeah, it, that, that, would, that would mean um, removing that uh, some of the 1980s and 1990s uh, additions uh, to the building. Thank you. I think what he's talking about is, <coughs> is the party wall. You got yep. two buildings. Yeah, I'm assuming sometimes there's just a face in the front, and there's actually a building separation. And sometimes that, that wall, wall is critical to yeah. each structure's yeah. support. Our, that wall we think is going to be gone. Okay. Based on what we've seen yep. so far. Okay. And I know what you're talking about. Yep. Yep. Okay. Just call it the party wall. Yeah. <laughs> Know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's, that, 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 that was the later edition. Okay. Is it purely decorative? Um, yep. Yeah. I think that's the functionality related to um, artists. Yeah. But, yeah. So this is 1980. Oh, okay. Maybe 70s for Tom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got those floor plans or not? Well, I uh, reconstructed the best of our ability. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's start with that. That was the item L. Consideration of purchase of Hibble Green Hill for 150000 from only to the start of giving. Yeah, you can. Okay. Um, so, this is formalizing our commitment to purchasing Hibbleton Hill from only in Wisconsin Giving Inc. once we receive the donation slash grant money of a total of $150,000. I actually have a recommended motion here. Um, if someone would be willing to read it, it's on page number four. Four? Yeah, page four. Under consideration discussion, purchase of Hilton Hill for $150,000. Um, just to clarify, so this is the property next to Sandy Payne Park. We're in the midst of applying for a grant. Several of the items after this will be talking about it as well, but this is for documentation to submit to the grant showing we are committed to purchasing this property once we have the $150,000. I can read it if you would like. Sure. Um, I will make a motion to approve by Kittleson Hill uh, 2.16 acres as shown in certified survey map number 5571 from only in Wisconsin Giving Incorporated for $150,000, including monies donated by Nuclearis Cares Community Foundation 
if grants and donations are received. Just to clarify, including money is donated by the entire CARES. See where about if grants and donations in this totally 150,000 yeah. well, that's, are that's, received. Yeah, for 450,000. I don't see that. Yeah. Saying it should, I think it should be in after the donation. Okay. If grants and donations of in the amount of 150. Um, can can we? So you're mm -hmm. requesting a friendly amendment to that. What I would want to include then, if we're saying that, is uh, that that was okay. Include the grant. Okay. Um, so I would uh, make an amendment to that motion then to include at the end of if grants and donations are received in the amount of. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Mike, would you mind just rereading the sure. I just want to make sure I got it right. Yep, I will reread it. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve buying Kilson Hill, two point one six acres, as shown in certified survey map number five five seven one from only in Wisconsin Giving Inc. for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, including monies donated by New Glarus Cares Community Foundation. If the grant and donations are received in the amount of one hundred fifty thousand dollars, thank you. Good. Okay. Great. Good job. Thank you. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, item M. <clears throat> Consideration discussion. ENR enrolls Nelson Stewardship Grant application and approval of grant resolution 2311. Page 56. So we have the grant materials included for um, this grant application. Uh, I want to thank Gear Becker for all of their help preparing this grant. Um, so this this action would just approve applying for the grant. And you have a resolution attached as well that would just signify your support for this application. Uh, I would just because you haven't been involved, the, the, the DNR application is an application for funding for up to 50% of the purchase price of the property. And in going through the application, there had to be a formal appraisal by a, a DNR approved appraiser. And that appraisal came out at, uh, it was just over $150,000. Mm -hmm. So the village of New Glarus, uh, and there's gonna be other items related to this, mm -hmm. would qualify for, I think it was up to $75,400 in grant money that could be used, that need, would be used to help purchase the, the, the property by the village. So the money would be given to the village, that money would then be used to pay only Wisconsin for the property. And that would do it, Mike, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. that, would, that would absolutely do it. But, you know, as we have discussed before, if we can get all of that money and we end up raising more, as a part of the New Glarus Cares Community Foundation, we could use that extra, you know, whatever has been raised towards equipment or other other things, you know, that will benefit the village. So it's really a, a very worthwhile uh, effort to go through and try and get this yeah. done. So that's kind of a nutshell of what uh, this is all about. Thank you for the grant application. I did not put those two together. Oh, yeah. So. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody have any questions on that? I'm going to go ahead and the um, <coughs> grant application for the DRO's no Nelson Stewardship approval. Uh, grant resolution 2311 for the I'll 
Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. Item N, consideration discussion, resolution 23-09, approving reciprocal grant match with the town of New Blair. Go ahead. This might be the time to have him. Would you like me to speak first? Or? Sure, of course. You're doing a great job. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, at last week's town board, um, they had turned down uh, a motion to provide funding. A reciprocal agreement. Part of, part of this grant application, you get um, bonus points, or you get points right off the top if you can show intergovernmental cooperation. So, as you know, the town of Midlars purchased some property on Highway 39, and they are also applying for the same grant because they're going to try and have a, they're trying to develop a community park themselves. Please correct me. I can allow it. I can allow it. Yeah. Um, um, any, anyway, we we are proposing you know, an, an agreement to provide intergovernmental cooperation where we would agree to fund, help fund their project because we, we know it's of an interest to in the greater community and they would agree to fund Kittleson Park uh, because they know it's, it's, an, it's a valuable resource for community members both in the town and village. And by doing that, you, you, you get an automatic two points on uh, the DNR's point system for who gets awarded the grants. If there's 16 points total, so if you start off two points ahead of everybody, that is, that is a huge yeah. advantage. And I believe um, every indication is there's between 14 and 20 other municipalities applying for this funding. And it's been indicated that so far, the village or the town, everything they're doing, and all the materials they're putting together for submittal, puts them that they're in a very good position. Should we should we you know, move forward with the intergovernmental agreement, get this grant application submitted? Um, that, that just helps us. So um, what what I what I think this is proposing, if I'm understanding right, is that we would tonight vote to um, give the town of New Bears $1,500 to show our support for their park development. And I believe tomorrow, tomorrow night, the Parks and Rec Department will be voting on their contribution of $1,500 committed to the village of New Bears for support of our project and the funding for their, for their um, Donation would come out of what has already been approved in their 2023 budget. So I, I think that's a from the village's perspective. It's, it's kind of just turn around, you know, get this, we get it right back. But it, it clearly shows and, and shows that we are participants that are interested in working together for each project. Um, and I think we also had letters both from the town to the village and the village to the town stating our support of this. And those, those letters and the donations will be included in this packet um, that the DNR reviews. Evening, everyone. This is Matt Miller from Beer Bicker. Uh, one comment on uh, uh, what Mike has outlined with regards to the grant. Uh, Mike made reference to 16 points. Uh, that was uh, anecdotally what we have heard was the threshold for the scoring in the last funding cycle last year. So from uh, from our perspective and uh, putting the materials together for uh, the village in pursuit of uh, acquiring Kittleson Hill and also uh, in full disclosure, putting together the application for the town for their first town park. Uh, we look at it as, you know, that anecdotal, if we can have two points out of this 16 as a reference point. 
there were a couple categories, some scoring criteria change for this cycle. But if we're looking at two out of 16, just as an example, that's getting us that much closer. And Mike uh, made reference to, uh, we learned uh, about three, four weeks back, there are 14, one, four projects in this uh, DNR region that uh, Cheryl Housley, who is the village, the town's contact for, there are four, 14 projects coming from her region. So I say, uh, and I know it's a, a later item uh, on this agenda before you tonight, the amended court uh, that uh, Lauren uh, did a lot of legwork in terms of the language on talking about the teamwork between the town and the village. Um, it's, a, it's a good way to walk the walk and talk the talk and also say, hey, what our court, our outdoor rec plan is saying we're going to do, we are doing, and this is how we're doing it. So that is just uh, something that I wanted to briefly make reference to and, and add on top of uh, Mike's uh, comments already made. You want to add anything? I probably can. Does anybody know where this park is going to be? Near a trout screen? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Straddling a trout screen. Yeah. Um, I didn't do what. Uh, but it's not right on 39 then. Well, it's sort of all the way down in the this is a map. I just burned 104 copies of it. That's a that's a map of the village, and that's 39 out the right. So the uh, school branch. The the town of Duaras has been in dire need of a new town garage for at least 20 years. The town garage we're currently using is that whole barn out behind the uh, Sussex, and a lot of the Holes are running off the bottom, and we have more equipment than we need than we have within that, within that space. So we need it. We've been looking for a for a spot for a down garage, and we weren't really looking for a hundred acre farm, but we found a hundred acre farm for a place to do. So, uh, so what we're doing is uh, this map here indicates probably more clearly a light green area is the uh, is going to be. The Myers and Allison stewardship property. That is, uh, Larry, that's the, um, that's the, um, uh, Winter School branch. We'll go for the, and there's brown trout on the side. Is that there another species that the DNR highly values? I thought it was. There, there are two or three of them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not a fisher. But, uh, oh, my but there, are, there are people who are, and I appreciate that. So, <laughs> What we decided to do was to uh, uh, that area in gray there to the top left, right there. And that's about 20 odd acres, and we're going to put the town garage there. And down the road, perhaps a uh, you know, recreational facility, maybe move the town hall out there. Who knows yet? Uh, but um, Maybe a pickleball court. We have lots of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. pickleball. <laughs> and, and, and Mark, uh, Mark Denodiak has been clamoring around the dog park since oh, I've sure. known him. So, uh, <clears throat> there's all sorts of options down the road. But this particular property, we're doing with, with that light green area what uh, you folks are doing here at Hill in the sense of uh, we hope to receive half of our purchase price for that particular. Chunk, which is about 60.36 acres, or about. Um, and um, if we get the grant, we get that money back that we can, we can use for other activities. If you take a look at that little, uh, that little section that kind of goes up to the right, kind of right, but that's going to be a community garden. I think there's about, about two or three acres down in there, and be a community <coughs> garden, uh, and a lot of parking lot that's associated with it. And our plan is to have a walkway around it that is um, handicap accessible. Mm. So everything that we can do now on this particular property will be handicap accessible. So we hope to partner with the village in lots of ways. Um, since I've been on the Parks Commission, uh, this is a this is the first real major opportunity I've had to work directly with these folks on this. And I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, our Parks Commission meeting is tomorrow night. 
And as Mark indicated, well, we are going to vote on uh, providing a, a, a match to the Um And uh, hopefully, all across will be good. Mm -hmm. Questions? That community garden will be available to uh, village residents too, won't it? I don't see a reason why not. Yeah. Don't you live yeah. in the area? I mean, you know, it's funny. I, I, I always always say, well, are you local? Well, I live in I live in Crossland, so you're local, you know. <laughs> this is this is the, what I call the greater New Jersey. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, sure. We can keep keep that for the. Uh, oh, please do. For the record. Please do. Yeah, yeah. I just had one quick question, if I could jump in. I'm Melissa Hunt with Beer Bicker. I spent quite a bit of time on the grant along with Matt. And uh, my one quick question would be in regards to your resolution. Um, are page you- Page 72. Page, so, yeah, 72 of your packet. Um, if I'm truly guiding you from a con consultant's perspective, I would note that by putting in reciprocal grant, um, and kind of saying we're only going to give money if they're going to give money. Um, I used to be a reviewer on some of these grant applications similar to this. It, it somewhat says to me, this really isn't in the, it's an intergovernmental agreement that we're swapping dollars as opposed to we truly believe in the project. Um, so I just maybe would question or ask if you could clarify um, as opposed to just having a resolution saying we think this new park they're they're doing in the town of New Glarus is awesome, we want to contribute towards it. Um, why your language specifically states reciprocal grant would be my only comment, question, thought. Um, Harry, correct me if I'm wrong, but tomorrow the town um, wasn't necessarily planning on having reciprocal language um, that I was aware of. My uh, my resolution that I'll bring forward to the Parks Commission tomorrow night does not include the list start. So we're going to give you twelve fifteen hundred dollars for your project. Uh, that's it. So, so you're saying remove if the town provides a reciprocal match towards the village's yeah. yep. And yeah, and the title even says a resolution approving reciprocal grant. The second yeah. whereas yeah. votes your hill. Yep. Yeah. And me, I would just say we believe it's a you know, and I did craft some language. I'm happy to send something over too. I don't know, Warren, if you have any of the modified language I had sent. So like Mike was saying, um, you know, these two points are a big deal. Um, what I think Melissa had said last last year was like 30 or something like that points, 30, 32 <clears throat> points, 35 points, something like that. And now it's about 40 some. That's correct. Okay, so, so they have a few, uh, a few more categories. So um, with as many uh, grant applications out there as there are, it's to everyone's best interest to do this. But neither one of us wants to do that. But if either one of, if either one of us loses that, we'll do something in the community, in the wider community. And uh, so I want this to be, I would really very much like this to be uh, a really nice beginning to a final relationship and working together on these two projects. Uh, all right, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know how you want to word a motion now? Um, I think so. Do we have any language that's suggested? Or? So we have the resolution on page 72. Yep. yep. Um, if the board would like, you could strike. Well, I would make that part of the motion for the last time, for the last half of that time. Right. If the town is yes. it. Striking that and maybe striking reciprocal in the title of the resolution. Proving, um, so it would be a resolution approving grant match with the town of New Blairs. 
<clears throat> is there any discussion or okay so I will repeat. I would like well my motion would be to uh, approve a resolution approving grant match with the town of New Glarus, resolution number R23-09, and striking the very last half of the sentence, uh, the words, if the town provides a reciprocal match towards the village's park acquisition project. So I would further make your uh, Make the motion that the last paragraph just read. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the New Glarus Village Board hereby supports the town of New Glarus First Town Park and will contribute $1,500 to go towards paying the debt of the acquisition of the public land. That would be the motion. I'll second. Okay. <clears throat> motion and second. Any further discussion? So just for clarification, um, how does this give us two points? We are giving the town fifteen hundred dollars, no strings attached. That shows number one, we support their project. Number two, there is intergovernmental cooperation. Um, and then the second half of that would be the town improving their no strings attached donation to our project, I believe. Go ahead. Yes. Does yeah, that... so to clarify, technically what this does is this allows the town to receive points because you're cooperating with them. And then what the town is doing tomorrow allows you to receive points. So that's where I was saying is just cleaning up this language where it's not reciprocal. And we're, we can only make an assumption, but subjectively I'd make an assumption that if I was a DNR grant reviewer and it says you're giving me 1500 bucks, I'm giving you, that's not really cooperation. You probably wrote some stuff up to try to get the points. Um, so actually truly investing in the park from your, right now you're approving this to get the town points tomorrow. The town is approving theirs to give you points because it shows cooperation. Somebody has to make a personal. Okay. So what was the fifteen hundred number? Uh, that was, I guess, discussed um, when I was talking with Chris Nervison and, and some of the staff. But, you know, it, it's enough to show support. It's got to be more than a dollar or two dollars. You know, I think anything less than, than fifteen hundred. If it's a thousand or fifteen hundred. It just seemed appropriate without going overboard. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, yeah, it's a fair amount. Mm -hmm. you know? Enough to show good faith. Yes, exactly. Not like, you know, if you pledge to give you $10. Mike, uh, a comment I would add with regards to that $1,500 number, that $1,500 of the $150,000 to acquire Kittleson Hill represents 1%. Yeah. So DNR's perspective or our language perspective, we can say, hey, the town is helping us with the equivalent of 1% of this cost. And we know from the later for your one year later agenda items with the amended corp language saying, hey, there, there is an interest between the town as well as the village of New Glarus with current park and recreational facilities uh, that that relationship uh, exists and to be strengthened where possible. And that this is a kind of a, uh, an explicit way uh, to show that support as well, just uh, as an example, uh, where that 1500 came number came from. So, just to be clear, I mean, tomorrow night, the town board could say, No, we don't want to do this. No, no that's the part of the with the Death Sports Commission. Yeah, they're using money out of their approved budget. And that's, uh, and that's it doesn't have to go to the town. It does not have to go to the town. It doesn't have to go to the town. No, no. Okay. I just want to clarify. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and I guess one other point I would like to make with, with the rest of the board, I have been in uh, close contact with Deb Carey of Oldman, Wisconsin. She is absolutely thrilled that we're doing this and really hopes you know we can, we can help this move forward together because she thinks both projects are good, but she's really thrilled that the village is taking steps to try and get this money. And she's totally on board with the process of what's going to 
happen if we get the grant money and how this is going to work. Um, I, I guess I'd explain that only Wisconsin would give to New Blair's Cares whatever the difference is, you know, seventy-five thousand dollars up to, or you know, minus the grant money. New Blair's Cares would give the money to the village, and then the village would purchase the property from only Wisconsin with the grant money and the donation. And she's clear on that. She's thrilled about it. She was absolutely thrilled about the letter that we got from the, uh, our representative mm -hmm. today. Um, so she is absolutely on board that it's written as well. Yep. Yes. Any other questions or anything? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item O. Consideration to discuss resolution 2310 recommending building clearance by local for building material. materials. Uh, that's on page 73. I'm that we got to do that to, uh, for this grant. How does that help, Matt? Or Melissa? <laughs> This by local resolution um, and one of the um, one of the um, the nine one of the the nineteen page form from DNR. One of the questions is uh, in terms of local and or recycled content, and it is worth one one point. Um, so our pursuit of this and um, our you know our discussions around the office, for example, Mike, uh, the intent in keeping Kittleson Hill quote uh, the passive parkland, which is what successful receipt of this grant would do, uh, you're not putting the pickleball courts or stuff on the Kittleson Hill land, it'll stay kind of its open mode space as uh, most frequently referred to as Killer Hill for the sledding. But what this does is this by local resolution says, I know in the context of uh, the, the village court making reference to, hey, there was a desire that separate the separate project of new material on Candy Cane Park, replacing that equipment. The benefit here is in pursuit of this grant, if the village gets this, they get the up to 50 per, that fit up to 50% match or 75,000 out of the 150 to acquire Kittleson Hill. That means what money is that have been uh, raised as part of that donation process. Then we can turn our attention to maybe some of the facilities and the things in Candy Cane Park. Uh, it's not under the umbrella of this project. What funds are being pursued is not for the, the Candy Cane Park materials, but for the application process for this grant, you, we do have to prepare a site plan map, which for an open moat space sledding hill, there wasn't a lot to show. There was one sentence at the bottom that said, hey, if, if the village wants new park benches, or picnic tables, for example, for the Kittleson Hill facility, that this language uh, of this resolution on page 73 of the village wanting to purchase Kittleson Hill, it's been used for decades by the community. It's desirable to have high quality parkland in the, in the community. This resolution and saying, hey, we try to buy uh, the lumber and or what materials might be used to make benches or picnic tables, local and or recycled content with proof that can get us a point and that strengthens our application and as of no similar language for the town's uh grant uh harry's in the room i know uh had the same thing that intended pursuit the scouts helping volunteer hours produce benches or materials out of that local or recycled content as well we need a clarification of locally sourced. Uh, the clarification on DNR's side is proof that the materials are from uh, the state of Wisconsin. Hail, they hail from the state of Wisconsin. The assumption. Did you say from the state of Wisconsin? That is correct. 
So if you bought lumber, did you buy it from a lumber yard close by as opposed to buying the cheapest version online and getting it shipped here? Um, those are kind of some of the examples that we see is there's park and bench equipment you could order online. The intent is would you purchase those items locally? I, I, on the record keeping side, as far as um, if we would receive this grant, what is required? Or do we send invoices to prove that we you know, purchase these supplies locally or what is the requirement? So technically there's no requirement because you are not um, asking for a grant <clears throat> to pay for that. Um, you know, if in the future, next year, for example, if you were approved, you could apply for a grant to potentially pay for park benches. Um, so technically the way it reads is you're not necessarily required to do so. It's more of, um, and it's subjective. So DNR on all these gets to choose whether they give you the points, the person doing the review. Um, but this, what we would believe and what DNR has kind of told us is something like this makes them believe that that's a practice that you believe in. So I guess what I'd say to you is, as long as you all feel good that most likely you're going to buy locally, and if you can buy instead of wood, potentially a recycled plastic product that may last longer for a park bench, for example, uh, and try to buy that from a local distributor, that's sort of the intent of this, is that you make those efforts first and foremost before you just buy something else and have it shipped from online, for example. Thank you. I just want to make sure I have all the documentation needed if, if we hopefully get this. Yeah, that was a great question. And, and please note, uh, we believe to the extent you can buy local for everything, right? But notice that for, for the purposes of this resolution's language, it is just referring to the land known as Kittleson Hill. So. And the town did approve theirs, just so you know, last week, I believe. I guess I would like to make a motion to approve resolution 23-10, recommending that the village of Glaris buy local for Kittleson Hill materials. And by local, I mean using uh, resources that have been sourced from within the state of Wisconsin. I, I have any further discussion. And on all the papers, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item B, consideration and discussion of ARPA projects. Page 74 and 75. Okay. So, this is continuing the discussions we've had over the past probably several months now. Um, so, just for some background, especially for our new trustee as well. So, Village New Blair has received $225,000 from the American Rescue Plan Act. The Village Board has already committed $120,212 to purchase a new police squad car to pay for the remaining lead line replacement costs for a new pool heater and to fund the stormwater landing project under Highway 59. So, that leaves $104,788. So the Parks and Rec Committee and the Public Works Public Safety Committee have discussed this further, figuring out what our priorities are. So the Parks and Rec Committee recommended moving forward the four o'clock lighting and the pool benches. The Public Works and Public Safety Committee recommended police tasers, police window film, a brush pile, slash public works security cameras, and a public works track. So based on those recommendations, I put together a table that's in the proposed allocation section, adding all of those in there. I want to make a few notes on this. So the first one being I generalized the security camera line to just security cameras uh, for a couple of reasons. I'm hearing some differing opinions among board members on where we want to put the security cameras. I'm actually talking with another vendor and getting another quote on that. And so if you wanted to keep this moving forward, um, I kind of just generalized it to 14,000 for security cameras. And then I would bring this back to you to kind of finalize location. Um, we're also applying for a camera at Village Hall for election security. And so we could wrap that into the project as well. 
Um, so that's that. Um, additionally, I wanted to mention that the public works tractor, I know Joe is going to be working on getting quotes for that, and we're going to actually be looking at getting a used tractor. So that price might come down. Um, so that would free up some remaining money to possibly go towards security cameras or if there's another project you want to do as well. Um, I think that's everything. Oh, and I guess I'll also mention, so I also included a table on additional projects that the board has been talking about, just so you know what's kind of been taken out, but can be put back in. So police body-worn cameras, police squad cameras, Additional security cameras. So this particular quote is for the downtown slash village hall. But as I mentioned, we're kind of generalizing the security camera line in the recommended project. So we can come back and do downtown village hall if we want in the future. Um, and then I also included the license plate reader camera. Again, that could be included in another one. But I just wanted to let you know that that's kind of on the cutting board now. So we don't have to make a decision today, but I just wanted to keep bringing this back to you so we can continue these conversations. Um, that's where we're at now after the two committees had discussed this. Where can I add one? Thank you. Yeah. Um, the yearly ARPA reporting um, deadline is April 30th uh, this month. So that just remind you all we did this last year too. It doesn't mean that we have to have the funds allocated by then. I just have to do the state report that says if we've allocated the funds, what we've allocated them to. Um, how much was allocated, and then whatever is remaining. So last year we submitted that all the funds were still unallocated, which was the case. Um, and this year I will be designating that the 120,000 has been allocated, and then whatever else we would decide if we would decide anything tonight. But I can leave the rest as unallocated as well. The funds just need to be allocated by 2026 or 2024, excuse me, and they have to be spent by 2026. Okay, so we have. We have a Plenty whole, whole other year to allocate if allocate. necessary. <laughs> yes. And then we have a few years to spend the to actually allocate them. So if I can interject, um, this was a rather lengthy correct Michael. Yep. Very lengthy. <coughs> um, and we came up with this list as we decided to spread around that funding so everybody got a little bit of of, of something. And Joe and Jeff were, um, I would say, very, very easy to work with. They uh, removed things and added things so that everybody could get some of these monies. And I know, for example, um, the Public Works Tractor was a kind of, you know, a big chunk of that funding. However, I think that we supported it because of the different um, utility amenities to that tractor would save us money in, in the long run. And um, Jeff then went with his priorities, looking down the road uh, that for grants and possibilities that um, those other opportunities for what he needs to become available. So as we work through this list, um, this is what we felt was best choices to give everyone um, something that they would take in their department. Do you add any to that? It was a long it was a long haul to get through this. So it wasn't just really we had, we had good discussion about it and um, we looked at everything uh, with a lot of detail and uh, I think we came up with a list that we're all very happy with. Yeah I feel very much that way. And we had plenty of left over from prior. We had what 1800 in the, in the negative, so mm -hmm. we came up and now we still have you know the uh, look at us balancing yeah. the project. <laughs> well, depending on the trade, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> so many things to save us money to that we can become more independent of a lot of the of things we don't have to necessarily contract out because that will um, be. You want to interject here, Joe, that will help us save money in the long run. And then uh, Jeff was happy with what he had gotten for the time being. And again, uh, Laurel Clark was able to be fixed, providing. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Can I ask that thirteen hundred sixty-three dollars that's remaining? Thirteen hundred, yes. Um, could that potentially be used as our to help fund our donation for the town? And then if they pay us back, it would just go back into that account or some other general fund or something. I mean, would it make sense to uh, utilize that? That'd probably be a question for yeah, these guys because if ARPA has restrictions on where you can right. spend it, that, that's the big one. Right. I, I don't think we can do that. Okay. I just thought I'd bring it up. I think it's so close to what I think. Yeah. Yeah. I can yeah. go ahead. Well, I was gonna say I, I agree. It's the uh, our crowd funds they did uh, lessen the restrictions on how we can spend the money, yeah. so it's a lot more broad now. Um, but it's on general government expenses, so I'm not sure that that would fall into that category. Okay. Uh, one thing to add as far as the park budget goes, since that's brought up and funding the fifteen hundred dollars and it's kind of playing into this too. Um the ball field sign program that was approved a few months ago was Extremely successful. We budgeted for 20 times. We have 33, and I still think we have some more coming. Um, so our revenue line that we budgeted for is going to be a lot bigger than and what we had budgeted for, which is what we had hoped for. But we try to be conservative about it. So hopefully we can um, use some of that money not only to maintain our programs and pay our staff, but also to do some projects in our park and rec program. So am I hearing there's been enough discussion on this, or maybe we want to make a motion to approve it? And if we do, and like the, the estimate comes in lower for that public works factor, is there an opportunity then to bring back some of these other items at a later date? Yep. Yeah, if we have any, if we come under budget or right. anything, or we have right. additional funds, I'll come back to you guys and make sure we get it allocated where you want it. So we so. could potentially make a motion to approve this. I think Bill wants to make a comment. Um, Chuck, I think that if any of the money not comes back from us, I would like to see some sort of parks. Um, we have some projects that we could do, we'll talk about in the bank, and I hope that we can do that. Good. Thank you. And that's, that's a great idea, Joe, because then it gives. Uh, another additional um, entity yes. that uses some of that funding. Oh, sure. What we're sure. Yep. shooting for that everybody should get a little bit of. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> can we do that? Can we just be done with it? Yeah. Did you make a motion? No, I said you. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I can. Go ahead. Um, I, I, would, I would make a motion to approve the ARPA projects uh, outlined in the, the proposed allocation section of the memorandum. And I'm going to go ahead and second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Parts and Rec, consider this. Consideration discussion resolution 23-08 amending the village of Blair's comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. All right, you approved this at your last meeting, but I did not realize we needed a resolution to go along with it, so this is just a resolution approving what you already approved. <laughs> I would like a motion to approve the resolution 23-08 amending the village of Blair's comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Public works and safety considerations special event permit police fee. All right. So I have a memo on page 147. Um, this was initially reviewed at the Public Works Public Safety. So just a background. So for special events that require uh, police protection, so the bigger events, mostly held by the chamber, um, we charge a flat fee for police officers to help staff the event. Um, so currently we charge $45 per hour for police officers. Um, and so I've included some information on what our current loaded wages are. So loaded wage is the wage plus the cost of benefits. 
Um, so the table on page 147 kind of outlines um, the regular pay, loaded wage, and the overtime. A discussion at public works and public safety uh, was what figuring out what the numbers actually look like for this. So are we is the fee actually covering our costs? So uh, Chief and I kind of looked at you know running some numbers on a scenario. So we so he ran it on um, an upcoming event for yeah beer bacon and cheese. So you'll see on the table um, page 148. That looks at uh, a possible scenario. So this would be the chief working 16 hours at straight pay, two officers at 11 hours, and then part-time officers at 11 hours for a total 49 hours, which is what would be required for the event. So that would cost a total of $2,438. So uh, we show what the different fee amounts would get us to cover those costs. What so $45 we're actually in the negative because we would get $2,200. At $50, we're at 2450 so we would just barely be covering our cost. And then at $55 an hour, we're at $2,695. Just wanted to provide kind of a graph scenario of what that could look like. Um, and I want to mention too that the Public Works Public Safety Committee recommended raising it to $50 an hour. Um, we still recommend increasing it to 55, but um, if the board's not comfortable with that, then uh, we can increase it to $50 an hour. Um, Chief, I don't know if you have anything else to add on that. No, we just initially went with 55, then we put a spreadsheet together and we went through it to show it all. Um, the big thing is I was settling it. I work with festivals. Um, I was at straight pay, not overtime. Otherwise, it would skew the numbers so bad. So I'm, I'm settling it straight today. Um, that makes me comment. I'm just worried some of the festivals, like October said, that the bigger one that we might be in the red then, we can go over 50. And this way, maybe we're good for a couple of years so we don't have to keep revisiting. We did reach out and ask faculty about that. Um, how she felt comfortable with your funding going to the 55. And you said this is what it is, and we have to pay is that correct, whatever the wage would be. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we'd like to uh, keep it as close to what the real cost will be. You know, if that's 50 right now, we would be appreciating 50. But uh, we understand that the cost for, for salaries to police are, are going up, and we have to go up with it. The other thing I would add too is we don't we're in the process we're short two positions right now. And the other thing I was leaning towards the 55 when I originally went with is we don't know what we're going to bring in with the other officers. We have a we've got a couple that was six years of experience, so if they come in at a higher rate than the starting rate, we throw them at the three, the five year, you know, that's up at some more than so. Well, another concern I have is. If for some reason you have to take somebody down to jail, right? And you got to take them to the hospital first and then to the jail, you're going to have how long would that take you? Another three hours for somebody? Yeah, when we figure the lowest wage, that kind of covers some of that too, or you know, you got to do other things, fuel, things like that, and it's just kind of offset everything. Why would you do that flat rate? We did talk about that as well, um, and that's why mm -hmm. it, our recommendation was fifty dollars an hour, and that we review uh, review the tourist season in February, mm -hmm. and from there we have some data to be able to decide where to go next. That's a point. or if we it gives us something to do that to work with. So that is why we put subcommittee in that direction. So got me Well, I would move that we increase the special event basically from forty five dollars an hour. $55. Yeah. 
I'll send it. We'll just have a very good. So the staff recommend that recommends increasing the special event from 45 to 50. Yeah. 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 Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Right answer first now with nothing. President's report. 2023 Arbor Day Proclamation. 149. <laughs> Uh, I don't have paper on the 15th. That's why. 
Mike, I did have a printing malfunction at one point. And that's why. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> a lot of paper we okay. print out. Yeah. We're rushing down. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. We'll be able to get my phone on. Yeah. We'll be able to get my phone on. Yeah. We'll be able to get my phone on. Yeah. We'll be able to get my phone on. Yeah.